The Alden family came to Duxbury 390 years ago on December the 11th, 1620. 21-year-old John Alden and 18-year-old Priscilla Mullins met on the Mayflower and were married three years later in Plymouth. John Alden was the ship's cooper, or barrel maker by trade. The Mayflower first docked inside Cape Cod Harbor, or where Provincetown is now, and then sailed to Plymouth, where John was the first person to set foot on Plymouth Rock, followed by the Pilgrims. About 1630, they built a new farm near where the Alden house is today. There were ten children, six girls and four boys in the Alden family. As John and Priscilla grew old, most of their children moved out to have homes and families of their own. The Alden parents went to live with their son Jonathan and his wife Abigail in a new house a little distance away from their old farmhouse. This house is the one you can visit today at the Alden House Historic Site. This house was made bigger by John and Priscilla's grandson, Colonel John Alden. John and Priscilla Alden's second home, after the house in Plymouth, was located about 760 feet southeast of the present Alden House. There were the ruins of an old well visible on the property before 1840, but that location is now lost. This original site was well known and visited by interested people as early as the 18th century such as the Reverend Timothy Alden, a number of bricks, a halberd head or an axe, and possibly other unrecorded artifacts were retrieved from the old Alden cellar hole in the 19th century. The site was first professionally excavated and documented by historical archaeologist Roland Wells Robbins back in 1960. Today the old site is still clearly visible. A path leads through the woods in the back of the Alden house to the edge of a field. Crossing the field, you will find a monument and the outline of the original foundation marked with small posts that can be found. The cellar itself has been backfilled to preserve it. The room was part of the 1711 addition made to the house by Colonel John Alden. Earlier, the kitchen function had taken place in the great room, and the eastern end of the room was just part of the lean to shed on the north side of the original house. The original large fireplace in the great room was filled in and made into a smaller heating fireplace when the kitchen was added. 
You can see the original extent of the hearth by the short boards on either side of the present fireplace. The kitchen hearth and fireplace was the heart of women's sphere of work. Women made their economic contribution to the family in and around the home, tending the dairy. For white meats or dairy products, kitchen gardening, pursuing household industries such as sewing, spinning, soap and candle making, and of course, food production. storage rooms of this sort adjacent to the cooking area are common in old houses. A small storage area such as this could be used for food and utensil storage. The name derives from the old storage areas in England in which butts or large wine barrels were kept. It was here that various food supplies were kept as well as utensils not immediately needed in the kitchen. We have no food or groceries on exhibit but the boxes, bottles, bowls, crocks and tubs in which they were kept can be seen and there are, in addition, a variety of household implements.